I'm going to give the last talk of the day on, in this room. I'm going to talk about uh, kernel fuzzing and a few other related things. So, for my, I'm a research associate, I'm a well, fairly C committer. I'm a research associate working on operating system related and security related things in the University of Cambridge. And um, I pretend to sometimes do freelance software engineering. You want to come and pay, give, me money, give me money. So, to start off, even though it's about fuzzing, we're going to talk about sanitizers. Because these are, so sanitizers are useful for all of us. They're tools that will instrument, yes, yeah, so there's something in the compiler that will instrument your code so you can find some information about it. Uh, they, they do this by adding in a, probably in a function call into your code somewhere. There's some, not all of them do exactly this, but normal, you can think of it as when your code is doing something that you're, that the sentence is interested in, it will put in a function call and do a, a and do somewhere else. Uh, it could be, there's, there's cases where it could be on every entry into a basic block. So every time you basically put, well, almost every time you put down a, a, a brace and you're in the seat. Uh, it could be on every comparison operation, so you want them to see what values you were comparing in an if statement, or in a switch statement, or, or similar. Uh, or it could be on every memory access, so you want them to see some information about whereabouts your program, what, what memory your program is reading and writing, or writing and storing to uh, And in one time, there was, there was a, there's one time sorry, in the user space for these, so I'm not going to be talking about that. I don't really know much about those, those one times, other than you probably just turn on the flags, it works. Uh, but in the code, we need our own, so I'm, I'll start by talking about these. So the first sanitizer we'll talk about is about undefined behavior. So if all, you know, all, all, almost every piece of C code you can find will probably not be C because we'll have some, time, some undefined behavior. And luckily, there's a KUB saying for that. So, and what it will do is, anytime the compiler thinks that there is some possibly possibility for undefined behavior in this piece of code, it will put in a function call to check if it is or not. So things like shifting left a an int wider than the size of an int, it and I won't necessarily know at compile time if that's true. Or you know the, the other two, you know the misaligning here or using um, or no point of do reference. It won't know. You can't tell necessarily at uh, compile time if, if if this is undefined or not. Um, or, although if the compiler thinks of it, you know, can prove it is, it could potentially do um, quite bad things. Uh, luckily, NewBSD has the micro UB saying. So that's just, this is the, a very minimal implementation of uh, the undefined behavior sanitizer runtime. Uh, they, it was imported last year into NewBSD, and then I decided. That looks quite good. I'll, I'll do the same in FreeBSD. Um, and, and so I did this. It was around BSD CAM last year, so the Cambridge Developers Summit. Uh, and the uh, only problem is that it does increase the size. So uh, we, we do leave it off by default. It does make the kernel about 120 <coughs> meg for the old file, uh, for generic. And, um, and yeah, nothing beats the import this year. So you run it, and then you'll find this. Um, yeah, misaligned, misaligned memory access. Uh, no, no, you can no point of no point of the reference is interesting. This is actually code trying to find the offset of an item uh, of an item inside a struct. So it's the class null to a struct type. Take the address of the field inside the struct. This turns out to be undefined. Um, use, con use container of, or crap, have a similar, there is a uh, C built, uh, claim built in there. I think G, probably modern GCC will probably have it. Um, 
the, and the, the other one, the sub one is, you know, don't shift an N64 left by 64. The, the compiler can do anything at that point. And, it may, you know, some, 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 some compilers may just turn it into an instruction that will only look at the lower bits of the, the size and shift it left by that much, but if, if it's out of bounds, and it's sort of too wide for that type, then I won't look at the lower bits of that, and so I won't shift left at all. And so you, you could get unexpected results. So if you may expect zero here, you may not get it though. So this is good for just general code cleanliness. Um, if you do an Ableton free you you'll get lots of errors. And it's all, lots of warnings, I just uh, warned you about that, that. You may, may, may take a lot of effort to um, you know, actually find ones you're interested in. Uh, but then, there's a, a coverage sanitizer. So, this is one that they will insert interesting, you know, insert um, calls into the um, into, into your code on, on two points. We're interested in when we when we start basic blocks. So, you call into you inside the start of a function or inside an if, if condition. It will put in some code, a function called in there. And also on comparison, so when, whenever you run your if statement, it will put in a call. It will also tell the compiler, I told the, the runtime, a little bit more information about the, the comparison. Uh, so it will tell you what the two arguments are. Uh, it will, and it will also tell you the, the width of the the comparison because it uses different functions depending on the width and whether or not you've got a con uh, one of the values is constant. If, if both are constant, of course, it can optimize it out so you won't see this. Uh, luckily, all, all, all OpenBSD, FreeBSD, NetBSD have, um, all, we've all committed, got a version of this. They, um, I think we've all independently implemented it. So. PC uh, tracing. This is uh, tracing with basic blocks. You get, a, what you do is you're allocating a buffer. So this, the top here is the buffer. And then the start, the first entry in the buffer, which entry is uh, depending exactly on the, uh, on the operating system, is going to be the size of the number of items sorry, in the buffer. Uh, this is the number of items that uh, have, have a valid ID, valid entry, so not the size of it. Uh, then they're just a list of program counters, or um, whatever exactly you want to call it. You know, it's, an address, it's an address of somewhere inside, probably the starting base block. Um, where, so each of these is, um, FreeBSD and NetBSD both put these 64-bit wide things, so it makes it nice and easy for the next one. But, uh, OpenBSD is used U and pointer T, so 32 bit code will be 32 bit, 64 bit code will be 64 bit. Um, this is this is okay for tracing. You find out all of the values. You don't necessarily find you know, why you're going here though. And that's where you get this is where comparison tracing comes in. So you'll get some number, so you still get the same count at the start, except in this case it's number of um, four, four entry. Um, items. So the 348 there will be 348 by uh, four entries by the width of each entry. Uh, this one you'll get some more information. So you'll get this type here. Uh, so in the first example it's two, which, which basically means it's a size of whatever size one means, uh, which is a defined thing as uh, 16, by, uh, 16 bit comparison. And the bottom bit is a constant const uh, value, which means it's not const in this case, so that means the two arguments were both come from a variable somewhere. And then you'll get the PC as well. Uh, this turns out to be quite useful in that you now know why you're getting there, going there, rather than just where you're going. Uh, so you can then potentially feed, if you see data in one of these that, and then you can find it in your input file, or your input data, you could potentially modify, try modifying the input data to be the same as the other argument. And you could try 
uh, using that to, to get to, to find new, new interesting parts to your code. And this, this is the same thing. You would, um, OpenBSD will have your, your point of T for each, the, each field, which means um, I'm not sure how it does comparisons with 64 bit types. Uh, I think it might just drop the top 32 bits on a 32 bit architecture, which probably isn't, doesn't matter. You know, it's unlikely to be used there as much. Uh, so we can do this. It's a simple way. All you have to know is you, so you have, you've got a dev kconf, which is just a device um, that you have, has some layout to interfaces that you can um, communicate with. Uh, you, you have to set the buffer size first just because the kernel needs to allocate memory. Uh, you can then em map it. And the interesting thing is you. You can trace, you, when you're tracing, you don't have to be, you just have to enable the tracing on the thread that you're wanting to trace. So it's, and it's only the kernel part of the, the thread. Uh, so this is only going to trace a single kernel, a single thread in, as it enters the kernel in returns. Uh, you, um, it doesn't even have to be in the same process on the previous step uh, You have to zero the first byte, the first field, just because you need to, just because it will just append to that otherwise. And then, do your do your operation and undo everything. You can you can keep rerunning this if you feel like. Um, you'd have to keep closing it. And this this will become useful later when we talk about fuzzing because this means that you've got some sort of feedback about what parts you've got through your code and what have you seen, and then you can then uh, look at more. You can then try to infer how you can um, get through the code later. And you're in, new in, new in um, more malicious ways, but then okay. So these are the, those are the two trade, two covered um, the two sanitizers that uh, exist in all the VSDs at the moment. But then so we've got these other ones. So ASAN. This one, this is a useful one for checking if you've got memory that's and uh, making sure your memory is in bounds, your memory accesses. Uh, you can. So what it's doing is, when you allocate memory, or do something like operations on the stack, it will have a, a shadow, a piece of shadow memory. So it's a, just some allocated memory somewhere else in a, a fixed area that it can say every every eight byte block of main memory of your KBA or your kernel address space will allocate one byte of this shadow memory. Uh, and then we can mark when we've got one, one you know, any, we can say whenever the memory is invalid, we've got a value. And when one to eight bytes are valid, uh, we can put, we can mark that. But the, the, the condition is that it has to be from the first byte of the eight byte block, and it has to be on an eight byte boundary. So we can say, no memory or any one of contiguous you know, memory. So I've got so a picture to explain this. So we've got here we've got three bytes are valid. And then the, the trailing five bytes are all invalid. And that's when the study that's the top of is the, the shadow <coughs> memory uh, byte. So this we're saying if we say n is three, then three are valid. It's easy enough. Uh, if we say n is zero, then we can have all all of that, and this is just the this is what the, the, the KSN expects. So we and for uh, various, you know, various reasons, and if it's un, a zero, it's if it's less than zero, it's an all invalid. It may be, and we can also have certain uh, less than zero values that are uh, mark um, this, this memory is invalid, but it's been previously allocated, for example, or we can give it some information about why it's invalid. Um, the reason n is zero is because, and the, is, is the ABI is because when we do, there's an option to build it where uh, the compiler will insert these values, when, for example, at the stack. So we have to make sure we, we stay compatible with that. So that, this will just summarize. That means all allocations would now need to be put uh, to at least an 8 byte boundary. Which is like, okay, that's fine. And, and rounded up to a, another, uh, another 8 byte boundary. So 
you can start another allocation within that, that boundary. Uh, but of course, memory, training memory can be marked as invalid, and we, we should hopefully catch that. And also, we, can, we should really put more, we should pad out slightly more than just to the end of that, that bound. Because what happens if I get my pointer and I get it, I accidentally move it on to the next one? I mean, there's a limit to how much you want to memory you want to waste. But we could probably have one or more 8 by bit byte blocks after this, uh, just to make sure that we don't accidentally go a wee bit out of, out of bounds. Um, it's also useful because uh, pointers to, uh, if you also need to, if you do go right up to the end of your way back boundary, uh, you want to make sure there's at least another block that's invalid afterwards. And pointers to arrays are allowed to be pointed to the end of the array. So you don't want them to accidentally do a do reference at the end of the array. So I've got a wee example. This is, if you're not used to um, Fury C's allocator, this malloc in the kernel, um, just the end of the you can ignore it. It just means it's temporary values and is guaranteed to succeed <coughs> or wait or sleep until it can succeed. So data is guaranteed to be non null. Uh, I've got some function get data which takes a pointer and a uh, argument and it's going to return the first item. So hopefully this doesn't have a buffer overflow in it. I don't think it does. And this get, get data may, but I don't know, I haven't specified that. So we'll create this. Uh, we're starting off, our memory goes up. So low, the bottom is the low address, the top is the higher addresses, and uh, across to the right as well. Um, oh, sorry. So I've allocated four bytes, and sorry, I changed it from being on the stack to a a heap of um, allocation. Uh, we've allocated four bytes because I see inside the event, which is four. Um, we have to pad that up to eight bytes. So we've got another four bytes at the end to make sure that you don't accidentally go just past the end of the array. Um, and then we'll put another eight bytes on the end just in case, um, because we always put eight bytes on the end just to make sure that you don't go and you don't uh, overflow. Um, that means so the blue, the first four bytes there blue are uh, data you can read and write to without it detecting, without uh, without anything happening bad happening. Um, and so if you accidentally were to try reading any of the other values, then uh, Google should at least warn you that you're doing something that's silly. And so we'll put into the, your allocation uh, these values, and it will say in the shadow map I have. 4, which means 4 bytes, and FF, which means invalid. Um, so that means we can load, we can load a store to 0 through 3 is fine, and 4 through 15 will be detected. Anything past 15 I couldn't say because that's outside of, of this allocation. Uh, it could be the allocator may have put something there, it may have been the end of the map, the, page and so it's okay. We don't know. And so now we accidentally read from data one and everything should and we'll get back or twenty if depending on exactly your implementation. Uh, so let's go Google as uh, Nibby Stato has, has a version of implementation of this and I have a student um, who will be working on this in the sum of code. I have an initial, an initial patch which doesn't quite do everything to explain, but it should at least um, get, get the student started. It's, a lot of it is finding every allocation we've got, which is horrible in the kernel, trying to find everywhere which we may allocate memory. Um, so there's this other, which, then Google came out with this other interesting uh, ASAM um, implementation which is a hardware-assisted version. Um, this is ARM64 specific because it uses a feature in ARM64 called top byte ignore, uh, which basically means uh, it will ignore. You can put any value you want into the top eight bits of your of your point of your address that you're loading or storing through, and or just ignore it and pretend it's. Um, it will look at it. It looks at a bit 55, I think, of the address and extend and 
extends that up. Uh, so it doesn't matter what you put in there, or you get you don't the hardly just ignores that memory, the, 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 the value. Uh, so they say, well, what if we put a tag in there? Uh, and you know we've got two fifteen six bits, uh, two fifteen six um, possible values. Uh, we could put well, we'll reserve a tag for unallocated memory. So we've got two fifty five possible eight um, bit um, possible values we could have there. Uh, and then we'll just store the tag. We've got some way, way of allocating share that space. We'll just store the tag there um, to for that piece of valid memory. And so every now, every time we do a load of store, we check the tag. You can check the tag against the byte, the, the shallow space just to make sure that it's valid. Um, so this does mean you you the previous one uh, you may you're only just getting out of bounds. This one you may get a few other things, um, a few different issues. Uh, find a few different issues like um, you, if you allocate free allocate, you'll get use after we like would hopefully be uh, be detected. So what does it do? So we start off uh, no uh, allocations. We make some allocations. So we've got no allocation, and then we have a couple, uh, two more, and then we try to load from address three, and because. But with a pointer from a blue pointer, so one it would work for one and two, it will not work for three. So it's basically, it's a it's, this is a slightly different way of doing it. Rather than saying, um, rather than saying this byte, this is this is valid. We we can say this is valid, but only with this pointer, um, which previously we couldn't detect this sort of thing, because if we move accidentally move from an allocation the blue allocation to the grey. Uh, we would see just, well, we've still got valid memory. Um, they also do a few more things, so they make it slightly more, slightly wider because they want it to run this on phones. This is a, a Google thing. Um, so everything's 16 bytes and undersized. Um, and you're not <coughs> able to detect slightly out of bounds issues. So because the tag is per 16 bytes, you can't say if you're just, you're, if you're still within a 16 byte like, boundary, Block you you can't detect that uh, yeah so you've got a and you've got probabilistic this is hope you're, you're sort of hoping and there is now an MV, MV 8.5 I uh, mean uh, tagging extensions which are similar to this uh, which with a, a small tag um, but this I mean that, that's okay it does uh, it's useful for day for finding issues as well I think um, not. Yeah, different, slightly different classes of issues, but then well, we've got this. Oh, this is the project I work on where we have this. Um, we've decided, well, what happens if we take pointers and double the size of them, but then encode some bounds and permissions in the top, <coughs> the top bits and make sure that they're non forgeable so you can't, ex you can't just get one from anywhere. Uh, and, and you have to derive them from other capabilities so you can't just. You can't just take one and then try to expand it toward a memory. Um, this should also be, this, you can consider this to be similar to a sanitizer. Uh, with Cherry ABO, we make all pointers of these capabilities, but come, come along tomorrow morning to, see, to hear what to tell you about this. I'm, I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, so, yeah, we, we should be able to, we will be able to get uh, slightly out of bounds um, issue. Um, Pointed, uh, so we'll, yeah, we'll be able to get pointers that are slightly out of bounds, like ka -san, uh, but we don't get the tag things. With, we don't get tagging work you do with the, the hardware address sanitizer. So you still get uh, potentially get use after free. Um, and there's are possible research, there's research going on about narrow bounds even more. So we can say, can you detect out of bounds accesses within a strut? So if you've got an array, array, for example, you want to make sure that you don't ex or another struct within struct. You don't want to make sure you, you want to make sure you don't accidentally go out out of data and um, and, and into the parent and you know, do things that may not ACN may not be good at, at finding. And then okay, so this this is all about address space. That was finding bounds and things, but. 
In terms of there's, there's also the memory sanitizer. Uh, so this one is saying I've got I've got a piece of memory. Uh, I've allocated it. And I've allocated it, but it's just it could be random data in there. Uh, we want to make sure that you have at least written to that data before you try to read it, and or you 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 initialized it before you're using it. But so use here is decided as you're using it for conditional, uh, you're using it for to as a point of de reference, or you're copying it to user space. So the the last one is important for finding. Uh, you're accidentally leaking some memory from you know, some kernel stack, say, or uh, an uninitialized part of a struct into user space, which is, tends out to be reasonably common, the thing that people have done. So, uh, my example, uh, we've got an int, int A. We haven't bothered to, we haven't initialized that at this point. We've got int B. That's not a use, because it's not, it's not a conditional, it's not Point of view, definitely a point of view reference, and we haven't yet copied it out to user space. Uh, when we do this copy out, this is definitely a use then, because we want to make sure that this is now a stack, uh, we, 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 we're now leaking stack information to user space. So it's a, definitely an uninitialized use at that point. Uh, this is, turns out to not be. We've got a, an integer which we haven't initialized. Uh, we set it only if the flag is set, some flag that was being passed in. Uh, if, and then we'd use it, well we think it looks like it's used, but it's not. It's, it, it is going to propagate the fact that it is uninitialized to C. And then if the flag is set, or yeah, if the flag is set, then we use it. And because it's impossible, you can, you can only get into the second case if you've got into the first case. That flag, that this is not going to be an uninitialized use, so you, you, you can part your file. Probably don't write this code, please. Don't, uh, you probably have something else in the middle, though, that you, and your compiler should warn you, but it's possible you, this sort of thing happens on it by accident. Um, so you won't, it won't detect this sort of issue because it's not defined as a use in, in the same case. Um, other ones, if you're you're allocating some memory. Uh, you're trying. You're you're dereferencing de it. Uh, at the point, at the point of dereference, is not it's uninitialized. Yes. Uh, yeah. Or sorry, at the point of um, uh, you of of comparison. Sorry. Now, uh, because in this case, I I have also I've asked for temporary memory and I've said it's okay to wait. Um, so that's definitely not going to be a, a no point of view reference, uh, but it might be, um, but it's not initialized either. Uh, so this also, you know, there's these tend to use a shadow uh, map, and it's one, one bit per byte, so it's basically saying if the shadow map of this, so uh, when we translate from between the two, so the, your KB, your virtual address to the shadow map, if it's a, if the bit is set, uh, we, it's poisoned, and so you, you can't use it, you can't read it. Um, we, you, you will need to do things like you're poisoned by default. Uh, malloc will unpoison memory, so make sure make it uh, readable, uh, if you set it in zero, which means zero in my memory, please. Um, and writing constant data to it will unpoison. Writing non-constant data will, will have to uh, it's been, yeah, it is with this case, writing non writing this data will propagate it back. So uh, if flag is unset, it will be it will still be the uh, the memory C will be poisoned, the flag is set, C will be unpoisoned. Uh, so no one, no one's implemented K um, MSAN as far as I can tell. Uh, but NetBSD has got the K leak, uh, which is a similar concept, and that it will find the uninitialized memory. Uh, but it uses so K 
KSN, KMSN, um, use out of bounds signaling. So they, they have another piece of memory which has a mapping between, um, somehow maps between your memory, your kernel virtual view space and this other, memory, other piece of memory. Whereas KLeak has uses in band signaling. So uh, on, on Mark, we'll, uh, we'll just write all the memory out. We'll write, overwrite with a, a known value. To all, that's a one byte value to all the memory. And then when you do your copy out, we'll check has any of this, this uh, data, this memory copying out, contain that known value. Uh, if it does, then warn that there's a potential kernel uh, uh, disclosure going on. Uh, it's, there's, it could be, you can have some false positives in that one, obviously, because you made that, that value may legitimately uh, be in the, in the memory. Uh, it does. They do. There was. Uh, there's a paper back on this, and they do explain how they chose the how they how they choose this byte, um, and it does change over time. And from a from a pool of of bytes where they found uh, these ones were less likely to be used to be copied out. So there's certain main, certain values which are extremely likely, certain values which are unlikely. So if you use one of the unlikely ones, you're going to minimise false positives. Um, you could. The other issue, the other one is, is uh, it uses the coverage sanitizer type thing, system to uh, poison the stack. So every time you enter a basic block, it will just write out overwrite anything past the end of the stack. Uh, so that as you when you return uh, from that, uh, if you return from there and go into another function, but don't initialize the memory on the stack, it will you will detect it. Uh, so you. I think you could probably, yeah, it's been ported to previously, or they haven't, and there have been some vulnerabilities uh, or some memory issues reported in fact. Um, I don't know if we want to import it though, I don't think we do, uh, because I hope that MSAN would be, KMSAN would be, uh, we would do it. And lastly, there's the uh, threading sanitizer. So, this one just, I don't know anything about this one, so I'm just putting it up here for completeness. Uh, there is a key, the kernel version of the threading sanitizer. Uh, it may or may not be on hold. I couldn't really tell from the from my Google Googling whether it's currently being worked on. Um, but it's just there to find databases. Um, if anyone does find out, you know anything about this, I'm happy to, I, I'd like to know, because I'd like to know if, we, if it's something we should be looking at. Okay, so we've got some sanitizers, but why? Why do we want them? Um, well, well, the obvious one, more, you know, is it makes making bugs easy to, to find and hopefully fix is good. I want to go to know I'm making, I'm doing something stupid, and make it easy to find I'm doing something stupid. Uh, Kikov is good. It helps fuzzing. It means that we can find, we can find more bugs and hopefully, hopefully fix them. And um, they also it makes it easier. And it makes it easier with having the right having the right parts of Kikov makes makes and the other sanitizers makes fuzzing bugs easier to find. You know, so you, we can find. You know, FreeBSD has, for example, has tools to find use after free issues. The problem is, the point at which you find out you've, there was a use after free is when you try to allocate ne the next, and, there was, and you just happen to allocate, be allocating some memory that uh, was previously written to after, after being free. Which may, yeah, that's okay, that's, that's a good thing to, to know, but I would like to know when it happened. I don't want to know that, that, that I've got to use up to free in some time in the past. I want to know I've got to use up to free now, so I know exactly what piece of code I have to look at. In fact, uh, but yeah, so that, that, that's really why I want the sanitizers to make sure I know exactly when the code. That, well, you know, I've written some. I've got some code I'm looking at. I know it's got to use up to free issue. I want to be able to fix it. Know exactly where it is. Uh, so, 
yeah, Fiskada is no is a it's a system called Fuzzer. <coughs> um, Google's it's written in certain uh, well other people have worked on it as well. Um, it's written in Go. It's still, it supports FreeBSD, NewBSD, and OpenBSD. Uh, it's very good at finding panics in the kernel. It will it will use so it uses the coverage sanitizer to say uh, you give it you give it's, it knows how to find it's, it gives it some system calls and it will use coverage sanitizer to see actually where it's gone. Uh, so that's the main reason I wanted cake of was for this. So you get some reports like this. So this was uh, the most recent. Um, Issues that has found. So Sysbot is the Google, um, as Cisco kind of running on Google's infrastructure. Uh, so they've got they've got a single um, instance, or sorry, a single machine type. I mean, they, they I'm not sure how many instances they have of this. And then they found these bugs and there's more on the bottom, which I can't really see because no, I, did, I didn't zoom out enough. Um, so if, any of the, if you know anything about any of these, you might have a look at this. Some of them, uh, so some of the, when this is repos, it means that it's got a reproducer, but it's in Cisco that's format. Some of them uh, will also be able to, it can generate C reproducers if you want to try running it on your, your local infrastructure. But then, okay, so we've got one type of machine, one instance type running. If you have, if we had, uh, very, uh, these sanitizers, we may be able to get, you know, this is the Linux example. And how many of they, you know, they've got, they've got a few different types. You know, they've got, well, most of these are always saying anyway, but they can, Google can then run and find issues where, you know, they can find the use after free issues easily because they've got KDC money. And they can find other, you know, when you may be released, um, leaking Entrepreneurial information to user space because they've got versions with KM sand money. It'd be nice if we could have these and then we could run a lot, a lot more and find even more bugs. So, yeah, what has this kind of works? So, well, it will try to, so what it does is it runs different system calls, it understands arguments. So, it understands that this function, this system call, Will return you know return a function point up, uh, return in a um, file descriptor. It will then try to pass that file descriptor into something that takes in a file descriptor. It may not be something that naturally goes together. You shouldn't probably you know you wouldn't write it this way, um, um, but it will still do it because you could because it's a file descriptor. So you know it doesn't know anything more than that. Uh, and it turns out that's a good way of finding like, bugs when you, you pass in something you really you really expect it. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, like I said, it's good at finding uh, panics, kernel panics. It will find new producers for you if you wait, <coughs> or if you wait long enough and hope. Um, but adding and sanitizers makes it easy. Uh, yeah, so this is the example. This one here. We've got two reproducers, so this one does actually have a C reproducer. It will give you information, it will tell you uh, the kernel panicked, and here's the trace. Um, this is just comes out of FreeBC by default anyway. It just understands enough about this to, 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 to print it, to record it. Um, and I think this one, yeah, this one, this is from a fixed user um, issue, so I think Mark Johnson might fix this one. Uh, I can't remember. Um, and it has found that this, it's found this one a few times. Uh, yeah, five, five, I found this one five times. So it got in here five different ways. Uh, join these mailing lists. These, these mailing lists. They will tell you. They will run it from their infrastructure. Email it every time they see that issue. Uh, when you fix, and then when people fix things, if you tag it, they will tell you put this reported by the, this address in the commit message, and it will know, understand. It will then 
check tape that and say, oh, it must be in the fix. And then check, make sure it's, it has been. Um, and so, yeah, I, I can find the list if people are interested. Uh, we get, you get mail emails fairly regularly about so this found a new issue. The other one is, um, uh, has anyone not heard of AFL? So it's a, it's a similar fuzzer, it's a file, it's, it's a file format fuzzer really, it, it takes a file, modifies it, uh, tries, pass, tries sending it, so it's really good for things that do parsing. For example, uh, file system, maybe. Uh, it, will, it does this, it's got, you can look at this, it will come to, you, it, take, it has a map of um, it'll take a hash of old pointer, you know, new pointer. So basically, it wants a hash of some data, and then it will um, increment the value in a point in a um, buffer. So it can then say, uh, "I've tried tried running this thing. I got this hash, this map out um, of saying I went from here to here." Uh, it's not exactly this. I think there's, uh, I think there's some of the shifting in the end as well. But you get the idea. Um, it's good at finding um, edges in your code, so places where you've gone from one place to another. Um, so I did, I did an experimental patch to talk, so to get KCOV to output this format and for, K for AFL to consume it. Uh, yeah, it takes a long time. If anyone has any ideas on improving the performance, I can do about 30, I can mount a, it was mounted, it was creating an empty image, mounting, unmounting, with killing, I'm um, moving the empty image, about 30 mounts a second, uh, which I think I calculated as 12 days of someone, of, of just bit flips, because it will go through it, so the way it works is, uh, starts off just by bit flipping everything. Um, so if anyone's got any ideas on how to improve the performance of this, I mean, I'd like to know. Oh, in conclusion, uh, sanitizers, yeah, We've, everyone's got, we, all three of the main VSCs have KCOV and KUVSAN, which is good. Uh, NetBC is KASAN, and it's planned with BSD. In OpenBSD, I suggest you have a look at this and at least think about it. Uh, other, none, we don't, no one has any of the other sanitizers, well, Cherry's not sanitizer, but no one else has the other ones. And, they make bugs easy to find. And you know, if you do this, Google will run your, th your stuff, trying to break it on the infrastructure. Uh, and you know, please look through these. It would be nice, you know, we, there are people looking at them, but it would be nice if you've got a new area of expertise in, in one part of the code to look at this, just even if it's just periodically looking at it, to make sure there's nothing that's um, you might understand. Um, and I would like anyone if they've got any ideas on making AFL fast, you know, to give me uh, to help me. Um, other than maybe maybe putting getting running the file system in user space or something. I don't know. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, so AFL can use a corpus. And I'm curious to know what was in your 128 kilobyte corpus. Have you tried it with like um, file systems that were damaged in some way, or did you just start from like an empty mount point? So yeah, the question is: so take a if you take a corpus and you want to know what was in it. Uh, mine, I started with a valid file system image. Um, but the one of the issues I found was actually uh, we recent previously recently got uh, checksumming support added, uh, which makes it more, AFL isn't really good, very good at, just, at getting past checksums because it now has to do a bit flip and modify the checksum to get past the checksum code, uh, which I tried disabling that and uh, that didn't, still takes a long time. So I'm wondering if there may be better tools there. A custom fuzzer would know that understands uh, you've modif I've modified this, uh, this Piece of memory, and now, uh, and now I'm seeing this other other um, condition being hit, 
uh, and failing, uh, which wasn't it, which wasn't failing before. Maybe I should look at that to say what what comparisons were there. Can I find one of other of those values in the, in my corpus? Change modify that that value to be the other value. Uh, as a possible way of getting past checks and checks. So, uh, less of a question, more of a comment, but it seems like this is a really good start to uh, sanitize our runtime with some that kind of stuff inside of the kernel. Um, I'm wondering if there's any interest to, um, since NetBSD and now OpenBSD are, are also interested in the kernel sanitizer runtime, if there's any interest in sharing the code bases and collaborating on that. Um, one thing that I'd like to do is to uh, uh, implement a runtime uh, that supports CFI and safe stack in the kernel. Uh, so there's a comment on sharing run, sharing code bases, and uh, well, sorry, we do share the undefined behavior sanitizer code base because that's all based on, as far as I know, that's all based on the uh, NetBSD micro UBSAN code. Uh, which also works, at least on NetBSD, it works in user space as well. Uh, KCOV, I think, are three completely independent implementations. Uh, that's partly because that part of the code, I'm not sure how similar the code to talk to, uh, to be on the, on the kernel side of a device is between the three BSDs. Uh, I'd expect uh, K. ASAN, K, MSAN, we could potentially share something there. Uh, a lot of it's just accounting. Yeah. Um, and I haven't thought about CFI things in the kernel yet. We need to uh, teach CTF convert uh, the LLVM IR bit code format. So, yeah, comments about teaching anyone else to teach CTF. Convert that and I'll be in the code for it. Talk to Sean. Is that one? I didn't exactly understand the, how the fuzzing and the coverage pieces work together. Are you choosing fuzz targets based on, for example, low coverage, or could you? Can so you know the, the, the way the question is about how do they, the two fit together? Um, okay, so you don't need uh, they, they there are two independent pieces of things, and you don't need one for the other, uh, but they complement each other in that uh, sanitizers make your bugs if you if you manage to uh, craft some input which uh, to your to the kernel uh, to which hits a bug which the sanitizer will, uh, will trigger. So if you've, you manage to send to run a system call or a, a series of system calls which cause something to, a buffer overflow to happen, uh, that may not, so it may not be detected at the moment um, because it could be a buffer overflow to be just reading in memory um, and it's within the page. Uh, the, cover, the sanitizers will make that about in, a, in a panic. Uh, the fuzzers are really good at finding because they they look at the code the code paths through your that you've got. They're good at finding those issues, and they they it will look at the it will it will take this say I've found this code path now if I modify I can I've got some information about that I'm going to now try modifying my input slightly and get, try and see if I get another code path then modify my input slightly try another code path code path. Uh, so it's more about they're good at trying to find these these sorts of issues, um, and the sanitizer is really good at detecting when you have hit one. Without the sanitizer, you'll still you'll still do this, but just it won't detect it as easily. So the idea is I want more I want the sanitizers there just to make the when you do get the issue uh, to make it easy to detect. Questions?